So moving on to Kyphoscoliotic Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, um, I was very um, lucky to be part of the Rare Diseases Subcommittee in 2016 and um, worked on the PLOD1 specifically for Kyphoscoliotic EDS. So this is an autosomal recessive condition rather than a dominant condition. It is caused by either variants in PLOD1 or FKBP14. The major criteria are congenital muscle hypertonia and congenital or early onset kyphoscoliosis. And you can see this quite severely in some of the uh, patients that are on this slide. This is taken from the 2018 FKBP14 paper. They also have generalized joint hypermobility. The minor criteria include skin hyperextensibility, easy bruisable skin, um, and you can see that there is rupture and aneurysm of medium-sized artery um, in the minor criteria, which I'll um, go on to show you in the next slide. And some other musculoskeletal features as well, such as pectus and talipes. So there's some overlap with classical EDS, there's some overlap with um, vascular EDS. A lot of the sort of key features come out, like the skin features of the bruising and, and so on. Um, so I worked with Dr. Angela Brady on the PLOD1 cases back in 2016. We reviewed um, all the literature. We found that there were 84 cases of um, patients published with kyphoscoliotic EDS, um, PLOD1 related. Um, and 74 of these patients had good clinical phenotyping that we then analysed. We found that medium-sized vessel rupture occurred in 11 patients, so much higher than we actually originally anticipated. And this tended to be more prevalent from their teenage years. So this is, uh, again, a uh, you know, fairly early onset and into adulthood. And six of these cases we found antenatal and neonatal brain hemorrhages. With um, the FKBP14, this is data that is also taken from Cecilia Gunter's paper last year. There's 24 patients with um, detailed clinical phenotyping. So the numbers are much smaller than the PLOD1, but um, it was initially suspected that there might be some arterial complications in this group of patients because of a history of aortic rupture in a 12-year-old sibling of a proven case of FKBP14. Unfortunately, she was deceased, but she had features very similar to her sibling, um, so it was felt that she had um, FKBP14-related kyphoscoliotic EDS. And at 50, the, the proband revealed um, to have an internal carotid artery dissection. There's two other cases, so there's a celiac artery dissection at the age of 41 and a hypogastric artery pseudoaneurysm rupture at the age of six. So we have small numbers, but we do certainly feel that there's arterial fragility associated with this condition.